What's up, everybody? It's your boy Ailers, aka Panda Daddy, and we're back at it again on r slash Am I the Asshole? I've got five really good posts for you, so I want you guys to sit back, eat your food, play your video games, and speaking of video games, to those who are curious and are interested in the game playing in the background, that is City State. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description to the Steam page if you want to play it. All right, let's jump into these posts. Our first post comes from user Stretch New Two One Six Four. I don't want to ruin our relationship by doing this, and I don't want her to be upset over it, but I also don't think I'm being such an asshole. My sister is having her wedding at the tail end of October, and she's decided, understandably, that she doesn't want any children to be at the wedding, which is perfectly fine. This, however, means that I won't be attending. I have three children, seven, five, and three, and as you can imagine, it's hard to find a babysitter for them on such a normal day. And even if I only went to the reception, it'd be hard to find someone to watch them for such a long time. Plus, I don't want to leave the kids. I would have to buy a tux and drive over three hours to get to the venue, and it's just not worth it. As you can imagine, considering that I'm posting here, my sister is angry because of it. She thinks I'm being selfish and just using the kids as an excuse not to go. We did get into a big fight about it, and we're both angry about it now. So, am I the asshole? Of course you're not the asshole. This is absolutely obvious that you're not in the terrible situation. I understand that you might be feeling bad, but you should know that you're not doing anything wrong. Your sister needs to get a grip that not everybody's going to attend her big party, because that's basically what a wedding is. Like, seriously, would your sister be upset with you if she had a party at her house and you couldn't show up because you had to watch your children i doubt that so what makes a wedding any different it's just a party and it's not like you guys had bad blood before or any reason for you to not go to her wedding so your sister's just being petty for no reason personally i would start distancing myself from my sister if she did that to me i wouldn't want to be in her life if that's really what she's upset about oh she's mad at me for being a parent okay i'm not gonna talk to you anymore because you're awful our second post comes from user chance object 7968 I'm a 27 year old man who works a job that allows for a very good amount of time for lunch break. So much in fact that I'll regularly head down to a cafe. I really don't know if it's a cafe but it's about pretty small so yeah. And sit and have something while with the time I have for the break. Keep in mind, for some reason this place is almost always busy. It just so happened that today a woman in her mid 20s came inside with a baby and it was so busy that it looked like there was like two open seats available, one of which happened to be sit across from me at a small table. This woman asked if she could sit at the table with me, the other table was under an air conditioner, so understandable. I said yes, what the harm would it be otherwise? So a little bit goes by and her baby starts crying. So she takes a breast out and starts breastfeeding. Obviously, I'm just avoiding all eye contact, but it got so uncomfortable that I ended up asking if she might be able to see if she can sit at the other table. I'm just trying to sit here, drink this cup of coffee, finish reading in my portfolio, and leave. The woman looked really sorry and really just said that she couldn't and the baby was already feeding or eating, I don't know. So I just downed the coffee and started to leave. A few people looked at me like I was a douche and it's been bothering me. I know it's a natural thing for babies and moms and there's nothing I can do. I wasn't going to try and force her away so I left. Was it too far to ask if she may have a seat at another table? I don't know. I feel like I was an asshole thinking about it now, but I just didn't know what to say when a random woman is breastfeeding three feet away. Was I the asshole here? Yeah, dude, that was crappy. That was an asshole thing to do. I get that you were uncomfortable because someone just popped a titty in front of you, and it was an awkward situation. You didn't really know what to do with that situation. I got you. I understand 100%. You know what your option was? To move to that seat under the air conditioner if it was open, or to just quietly drink as fast as you can and get out of there. You didn't have to say anything to her. You didn't have to make her feel weird for doing something completely natural. I don't understand why you would even say anything given that you could recognize the whole place was full and it seems like you're the only one who had a problem with it because I'm pretty sure everybody was close. Everybody would be able to see what she was doing but yet everyone else knew to mind their own business and go about their day without making any comments. You went out of your way to make her feel bad about herself for doing something completely normal and natural. So yeah, you're an asshole. You should learn from this situation and just be a better and more polite person. Our third post comes from user inheritance throwaway. Hello, this is my first time posting on r slash am I the asshole, and my English is not my first language, so sorry if the format is not right. Background, me, 19 years old, and my brother, 32, became orphans 10 years ago due to an accident my parents were in. My parents had always been a bit paranoid when it came to their mortality, so they had set a plan in case they passed. They left a significant amount of money for each of us, and our childhood home was meant to be mine. 
They specified that we would have access to our share of the will when we turn 18. Since my brother was already old enough, he took his money and cut all contact with me. Ah, that doesn't sound good. Imagine having your parents pass away and then immediately when you get your money, you don't talk to your only living family member, your sibling. That seems really strange to me. I live with my grandparents ever since, but last year I finally got my share. I decided to move into the house and use the money to pay for my studies. I'm in my first year of medicine and it's very expensive. I have estimated that when I finish medicine in five years, I will have a lot of money left to continue with what I want to specialize in and still have some left. My grandparents know my plan and offered to help with my living expenses so my inheritance becomes less exclusive for my studies until I finish. I accepted and we've been like this for a year. Now to the issue. My brother and his wife have three children, ages 9, 7, and 4. My brother spent his inheritance money on a house, his wedding, cars, and expensive stuff that one really doesn't need to live. My sister-in-law is a stay-at-home mom, so he was the breadwinner. My brother recently lost his job, so now their family is struggling and they need a place to stay. He contacted me and asked us for a meetup, and when I arrived, he and his wife were already sat down on the restaurant. Okay, here we go. I've heard this story multiple times from multiple different people, and it's not always about inheritance. It's always if someone hits the lottery, if someone gets a seriously good job, if someone just finds a dollar on the street. Every single crusty family member crawls out the woodwork to take that dollar from you. Let's see what OP does about it. Long story short, they said that since they were going through hard times, they expected me to hand them over my house and give them a share of my inheritance so they can get back on their feet. I got pissed off since we barely talked or visited each other since the accident and they were just demanding me to pay for them. I told them that I wouldn't because I already have a plan for the money and I was living on the house and they said I can move back with my grandparents and blew me off for being selfish. After arguing I decided to leave but now my cousins are calling me inconsiderate and I should help my family out. I really need to know if I'm in the wrong so am I the asshole? No, dude, you have no obligation to help your brother or his family. He was outside of your life for 10 years and only appeared to get his money and then left. And when he spent his money on dumb stuff, he didn't invest it. He didn't do anything useful with it. He came out of the woodwork again to ask for your half. You're stronger than most people because most people will buckle to family. They feel that they have an obligation to help somebody out just because they're genetically related. No, he wasn't there for you, so you're not going to be there for him. That's how you assert yourself and that's how you maintain money that you need to go to medical school. I hear this story way too many times and it's always the same result that the family member buckles and they pay out all this cash and this person becomes a leech for the rest of life until that money is gone and then they vanish magically. All of a sudden when the money runs out that family member no longer needs help. It's the same story over and over and over again and it's really tragic. Our next post comes from user Far Experience 2070 I, 25 year old female, fucking hate wearing bras. They're uncomfortable, constricting, and expensive. With work from home, I spent the last year and a half basically never wearing a bra and got used to it. Quite frankly, my boobs are non-existent anyways. Wow, that's a way to jump into a story. I recently started going to the gym again and started working out braless. I should note that up until now, no one has ever pointed out anything wrong with me not wearing a bra. However, in the middle of a squat set, yes, mid-squat, a guy comes up to me, taps me on the shoulder to get my attention and tells me that my nipples are poking through my shirt and I get really irritated because why the fuck is this guy staring at my nipples in the first place and then stopping me mid-set to inform me. I get really annoyed, try to finish my set, but then this fucker literally grabs the bar as I ascend and re-racks it for me. He claimed it looked like I was having trouble with the last rep and that he had to come over to make sure I could do it, then notice my nipples. I'm really fucking pissed off at this point and told him I didn't need his help finishing my set and why the fuck he was looking at my chest in the first place. He said he was going to spot me, but then noticed my chest and thought it'd be inappropriate. I pointed out that the safety bar was set, so even if I did fail the set, he wasn't needed. But he just insisted people at gyms look out for each other and that going forward, I should probably wear a bra so other people wouldn't get uncomfortable and that it would help me stay more balanced in my squats. I'm literally the only girl at the weight section of my gym at the moment, and other guys who were squatting in failed sets never had to worry about this shit. I've seen guys fail multiple sets in a row and no one ever rushes to their aid. But I have a very slight pause and everyone thinks I need rescuing. So now I'm really annoyed and also kind of uncomfortable that this guy I've never spoken to in my life thinks he's helping me and then has the audacity to tell me how to dress. So I tell him, you have bigger boobs and nipples than I do. Maybe you should wear a bra so people won't get uncomfortable and you won't fail your squats. He then got really defensive saying he was just trying to help 
then called me a bitch. Honestly, I'm not sure if I overreacted, but I'm still kind of pissed off, so maybe that's clouding my judgment? Am I the asshole? Are you seriously asking the internet if that statement was a bad one? It was a really good quip! You got him back! He called you a bitch because you hurt his feelings, not because you're actually a bitch. You told him that you didn't need his help, and that he had fat titties. I would say the same thing! It seems like the whole situation's been solved in my perspective. How would you guys handle a situation like that? If some person, man or woman, came up to you talking about your nipples, would you just tell them to go away like a normal person, or would you go out of their way to destroy their self-esteem with a really good comment? In my opinion, you're not the asshole. You handled that situation relatively well. It's... I don't even know why you're asking the internet this, to be honest. Our last post comes from user Throwaway Miscellaneous. My boyfriend, male, 24 years old, and I, female, 22 years old, have been dating for a little over five months. We're both fairly private people when it comes to relationships and personal lives, but we recently decided to introduce each other to our families. Last Friday, I invited him over to dinner with my parents, siblings, nieces, and nephews. Everyone liked him and got along great together, except for my sister-in-law, 34 years old. Throughout the entire night, she would barely say a word or even look in our direction. He complimented one of the dishes that she had cooked, and she completely ignored him. I'm not very close with her, but she's never acted this way before. Skip to Saturday morning and I wake up with a long Facebook message from my sister-in-law, in which she told me that she had been abused in the past and my boyfriend's appearance resembled that of her abuser. I genuinely felt bad and apologized and asked if we could meet privately and talk. She rejected my offer and told me that she said all that was needed in her previous message. I really didn't know how to reply, so I apologized again for bringing up any negative feelings from her past. I assumed that she just wanted to get that off her chest and possibly explain her behavior the previous night, and that was going to be the end of it. Come on now, you and everybody else listening to this video right now knows that this is not going to be the end of it. This is, this is the beginning of something really crazy. This sounds nuts. Then, my parents announce that they're having a family barbecue this weekend, and my sister-in-law calls and tells my mom that she and my nephews aren't coming if my boyfriend is going to be there. After my mom told me what was going on, I decided to go over to my brother and sister-in-law's house to try to talk with her. It didn't go as I hoped. She gave me the same ultimatum that she'd given my mom, and told me that they wouldn't be attending any future events if he was going to be there. I expressed that she was being unfair, and that I wouldn't choose in the future. She told me that I'm being insensitive and disrespectful towards her by putting her through this, that I'm being selfish for wanting him around after she expressed how she feels, and that I'm only 22 and won't even be with him forever, so why am I choosing him over family? I was incredibly upset at this point, and told her that it's unfair that she's punishing him and me for something that he has no control over, and that she needed to get therapy and work on her personal issues instead of projecting them onto someone who has nothing to do with her past. She was furious and told me to leave. Since then, she's blocked me on everything. She's upset with my parents for refusing to take sides, and for not uninviting me and my boyfriend to the barbecue. She messaged both of my younger sisters, one of them being only 15, and told them that I treated her badly and escalated the situation. My brother, her husband, wants no part of it and refuses to get involved. Am I the asshole? Honestly, I probably won't go to the barbecue, but I have no idea how to proceed. Say it with me, everybody. Somebody else's issues isn't your problem. I understand that you have trauma, but that's no excuse to tell your sister-in-law that she can't have the boyfriend that she wants and that she shouldn't bring her boyfriend to family events because her boyfriend happens to resemble your abuser. Your sister-in-law is sorry that you feel that way. A lot of people would feel sorry for you because that's a terrible experience, but homeboy can't control the way that he looks. So holding that against him is insanely unfair, just like she said. In my opinion, the only way to proceed is to talk to your sister-in-law about therapy and trauma counseling. Because if she's already encountered one man that looks like her abuser, she's going to encounter millions of others that happen to look the same way. And shutting down like that and being so out of character like that is not healthy. You need to see a professional and get that stuff sorted out. And in the meantime, I would put a pause on that relationship. Seriously, I wouldn't talk to my sister-in-law for a while until you figure out your emotions about my boyfriend and or potential potential fiance, because it sounds like this woman's pretty serious about this guy. In the comment that she's 22 and probably not going to be with her boyfriend for as long as she thinks she's going to be, was completely unnecessary. That was a really low blow, and has nothing to do with her feelings about her sister-in-law's boyfriend. So yeah, in general, you're not an asshole at all, but there are going to be some difficult relationship decisions that you'll need to make, and hopefully you can talk to your sister-in-law about seeing a psychologist. 
What's up everyone, it's your boy Aileris aka Panda Daddy, and I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, let me know in the comments down below, and leave a like if you liked the video, and if you're new to my channel, go ahead and subscribe fam, what you doing watching videos and not subscribing, and if you're old, make sure you hit that bell so you get these notifications every time. So yeah, we're posting 14 videos this week as a end of the summer Aileris marathon, so I hope you're looking forward to that, there will be an additional upload today, and two uploads every day until the week's end, so I hope you're excited for that. It's going to be an insane workload, but you guys totally deserve it, and I love every single one of you. And as always, we got to thank the Patreon supporters that make content like this possible. A big thank you to Cameron, Catherine, Taylor, Destroyer, Dustin, Esau, Ethan, Eva, Finney, Hannah, Harrison, Izuku, Jackson, John Robinson, Kiri the Sloth, Lady Laughs A Lot, Mina the Swift, Mr. Muffles, Muffy Lou Who, My Name to Knee, Sinan, Noah, Upanut, Pumpkin Pie, Sussy Bussy, Bimbo Balls, Tinky Winky, Nobby Wobby, Trey, Vermont, Will Billy, and Xavier, thank you so much for your support. It is greatly appreciated. And if you want to help support the channel, there's two links in the description, one in my merch store and one in my Patreon. Both funds go directly into the channel so we can maintain what's happening here. And as always, stay zesty.